Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist, here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast. You're in the right place if you're an agent, a team, a team leader, a broker owner, and you're looking to work smarter, not harder. You're looking to attract more high-end and luxury clientele and increase your average sale price. My name is Michael Lafito. I'm your host. Uh, just a couple housekeeping items. Again, we do have tons of episodes out there. If you've missed a previous episode, you can go to iTunes or Stitcher and look up Luxury Listing Specialist. Or you can go straight to the podcast website, which is the Luxury Listing Podcast. As I mentioned, my name is Michael Lafito. I'm the founder of this podcast and founder of the Luxury Listing Specialist Certification for Agents, helping agents attract more opportunities. I'm really excited about today's guest. Uh, if you guys have any questions for uh, for me based on today's podcast or for future podcasts, if you have any recommendations, you think somebody would be a great guest, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And before I forget... I am really excited. We just did launch uh, some luxury gear, if you will. Uh, go ahead and check it out. It's LuxurySpecialistGear.com, Luxury Specialist Gear. we got some really cool branded T-shirts and sweatshirts and, and that sort of thing, and uh, it does attract opportunities. I was wearing a Luxury Specialist T-shirt uh, when I spoke at the Keller Williams Luxury Retreat down in Boca in April of 2019, and I had three people come up to me during dinner and ask me, hey, what's Luxury Specialist mean? So it was a really good conversational starter. So make sure you check out LuxurySpecialistGear.com. All right, with that being said, today's guest um, I'm really excited to have David on. Da uh, David Osborne, he's the regional owner of Keller Williams Realty, North Texas. Um, I saw David speak several years ago um, at a Haas Pratt event. Haas is a good friend of mine. And um, David's al also the author of the book, Wealth Can't Wait. Uh, welcome to today's show, David. Thanks for taking time to be on. Michael, thanks for having me. It's great to be with you. Yeah, you're uh, you're well respected in the industry. You're also the the 43rd most influential uh, person in real estate, according to Stephen Swinepool's uh, 200 list. Uh, I went to the T3 Summit. Uh, I, did you attend that this year? You know, I have been every year. This year, I had a conflict, so I was registered to go, but I actually did not make it out there. Yeah, what a great person. conference, though. Uh, Stefan does a great job. Yeah, he really does. This year at the uh, the summit, it was in May of uh, this, you know, 2019. I mean, before lunch on day one, you know, he had the CEO of, of Zillow, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, CEO of Compass, CEO of Keller Williams. First time I actually saw Gary Keller speak. CEO of EXP, and then the CEO of. Uh, of of Redfin. So all before lunch on day one, it was very powerful. They each had a half hour, except Gary had 45 minutes. And the big takeaways I got on that uh, conference was um, artificial intelligence. AI was the key buzzword there. And, um, you know, the iBuyers, you know, the iBuyers. That's a whole different conversation. We can talk about that. But for those of you that are interested, uh, you could shoot me a, a note, Michael, at Marketing Luxury Group. But those were the two real big bullet points that a lot of people consistently talked about was um, uh, artificial intelligence when it comes to real estate. Basically, David, your, uh, your Amazon account experience when you go to uh, log in on your Amazon account is different than mine based on our uh, purchasing history and what we're browsing on. And many people think that's uh, coming to real estate and uh, in the near future. And then the other thing, as I mentioned, was I buyers. But uh, with that, I digress. Uh, getting back to David again, thanks for being on the show. And um, tell everybody a little bit about uh, how many years of experience and, and your uh, progression to where you're at today, if you don't mind. Sure, Michael. And I think it's very timely you bring up iBuyers because for the luxury specialist, I think 
you have some insulation from the iBuyers, right? So the iBuyers are heavily involved in Dallas. It's obviously one of the prime markets. So we have everybody up there, open door, knock, um, listing spark. Uh, everybody's buying. But what you find is they top out around maybe 500, but usually more 350 to 400. So you've got a, uh, you've got a lot of protection if you learn to list the higher end that you wouldn't have if you're at the lower end. I know that Open Door expects one day to be buying every single home up to a certain price point, but that, you know, it just gets harder and harder as you climb the price scale. So anyway, I digress. My background is uh, r- real estate forever. My mom got into real estate when my dad retired from the Army Uh, I was 14 years old. She got into real estate with an upstart company called Keller Williams. She was the fifth agent, and I never saw her again. She went to work at 5 in the morning, came home at 10. I think she had been a military wife her entire career, and now she had sort of liberation, if you will. And and her liberation was um, that she was no longer a housewife. She could go earn some money, and she had something to prove. And so she got after it, got aggressive. Now, this was back in the day when um, when there were books and there were no cell phones. You know, you didn't have a computer, really. You just had the books. So she became an amazing success. When I grew up and reached my point of decision, I had a choice between either the military or uh, residential real estate. And um, even though my dad lobbied hard for me to join the Army uh, and go, you know, get shot at, I decided real estate was a much better decision for me. I got into real estate. Keller Williams was at that time uh, just expanding. Um, And so after selling for a few years, I decided to go open franchises inside the organization. One thing led to another. And over a 23-year career now, uh, I ended up building the largest franchise inside the Keller Williams umbrella. And uh, we now sell about $11 billion worth of real estate, 37,000 homes. My partner is Smokey Garrett, and uh, we built Go Management, which is the number one real estate company in Texas, and also very strong in Memphis and in Albuquerque. Okay. I've okay. uh, never been to Memphis. I get down to Nashville um, a, a lot, um, but I'm a big fan of Tennessee. Low property taxes. We've got a lot of people from uh, the Midwest uh, going down to Tennessee because, uh, you know, you still get the all seasons, but it's a little bit warmer than, you know, Illinois and Wisconsin and Michigan and et cetera. So um, now you have a finger on multiple markets, right, Be- based on your go management team. And, and um, I think you said 5,000 agents we were talking offline are um, under that umbrella, so to speak. Is that correct? Yeah, we have a wide footprint and, you know, really kind of central United States, but we certainly have a good vibe as to what's going on in different markets. And then Dallas is one of the top markets in the country, obviously. We get to we get to deal with all the the new models, the innovation, the money, the capital, everything pours into Dallas, Texas. So we pretty much see it all. That's awesome. And uh, you, you talked about, you know, about 10% of your agents uh, are, are, are luxury agents. So between them and you going to these various conferences and being uh, the leader that you are, you know, wh- wh- where are you seeing, I guess, first off, overall the market? Here we are, you know, mid-2019. Um, you know, again, you're in different markets too. So, you know, from your perspective, and I know one market might be hotter than another, but overall, do you see, uh, in a general speaking standpoint, are we in a buyer's market, kind of a neutral market or a seller's market? And the second point to that question is, all right, then mid, mid-year, where are you thinking on a luxury standpoint? How are, we in a, are we trending in a buyer's market, seller's market, or neutral market? So overall, first off, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think we're, uh, I think we're in a neutral to um, buyer's market for luxury. I think luxury has been a little softer. Um, and then I think we are, you know, in a neutral market for um, – for the average buyer, it's definitely softened quite a bit, which is kind of good because we've been on this tear for 10 you know, years now. And it's, it, it was just really aggressive and prices going up so much can't sustain forever. So I think we needed to let some of the steam off. And so now we're, I think, in a neutral market. Um, and I think uh, we've still got a good little runway ahead of us. I think we'll be good through 2020 through the election year. 
Uh, but at some point, you have to have a dip. Nothing goes up forever, and we've been going up for a long period of time here. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher-end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. You know, you talked about been going up for a long period of time in 10 years. Um, man, I'm, I, I talk to these agents like yourself and or, or these leadership position people like yourself from different regions. And and I got to tell you, the Chicagoland market hasn't had a good 10-year run. Um, we got more millionaires leaving Chicago than, than any major city in North America. And um, property taxes and corruption and taxes are, are part of it. So... Uh, matter of fact, there's kind of a readership for the, it's like the Wall Street Journal readership in the Chicagoland market called Crane Chicago Business. And, and just this week, they, they talked about the McMansions and why they're not selling. And, and um, so count your blessings if you're listening to this podcast and you've had a good run the last five to ten years because there's some markets that haven't. And, and uh, I can attest in the Chicagoland market. But I'll tell you this, you know, life is what drives our business as real estate agents. So even though the market overall has been soft in the Chicagoland market, people are still getting married. People are still downsizing. People are relocating. Unfortunately, people are getting divorced. And that's what drives my business and, and, and your business. So it's really mindset. You got to stay positive. You know, when people ask you about the market, you know, you don't want to BS and sugarcoat, but on the same token, you don't want to be doom and gloom. You know, you want to manage it, people's expectations, but have a positive twist. You know, hey, if the market it's tough right now, but if anybody's going to get your home sold, you know, we're going to do that. I was just talking to uh, an agent yesterday who has his parents' home listed. It's $4.9 million. It's in the Chicagoland market in a town called Glencoe, right on Lake Michigan is, is this home. It's got frontage on Lake Michigan. And they paid a little over $7 million in 2012. So here we are six and a half years later, and they're at four nine and they're not getting any sniffs. So, again, it could always be worse. Count your blessings. We're on the other side of that because we've had a uh, really good market in Texas. I think some of it has to do with policy where we've got a low-tax, high-job environment, and people are moving here in droves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pro-taxes, uh, pro-business is, is really important, and um, we're seeing you know the opposite in Illinois, and and you're seeing some of that in New Jersey and New York as well. And people, are, you know, although they can afford things, they don't like to waste money. I was selling a home where the property taxes were $123,000. It was a $5 million property. And the buyer, I represented the seller, David, and the buyer came back three times. They brought their architect twice because they were thinking about doing an extensive remodel and maybe an addition because the guy supposedly had a $50 million artwork collection. And at the end of the day, he decided not to write the offer because the property taxes of 123000 although the guy had a $50 million artwork collection. People just don't like investing money uh, or wasting money in this case on taxes where they can make their money work for them and else, you know, elsewhere. Yeah. Who wants to pay those re really high taxes? I know that uh, a property I was looking at in uh, Cook County, that's one of y'all's, isn't it? it oh was, yeah. Um, yeah. That's had like 10% property taxes. It was a warehouse, but if you rent it out, the property taxes went up to 15%. It's insane, man. That's, that's uh, that kills business. Yeah. That does kill business. So t tell us a little bit about um, um, Wealth Can't Wait. Uh, what, give us the Cliff Notes version of the book and what inspired you to um, – I know you're the co-author of that book, right? Yeah, I co-authored it with my friend Paul Morris. Paul is um, from L.A. where he owns a bunch of Keller Williams out there, so he has a lot of experience in the luxury market of L.A. And uh, – when my father was dying of cancer, I, uh, I got inspired to sort of write a book as a legacy piece, something I would leave behind for my kids to read and trying to encapsulate um, the 20 plus year career with a lot of success and a lot of failure in it and encapsulate that in a story that could be beneficial to other people. And one of the number one takeaways from the book is the idea that, you know, every luxury agent, every real estate agent uh, is lucky enough to be paid to develop expertise in the field where more wealth has been created than in any other field in the history of time. There's been more 
millionaires created in real estate than any other space in the history of time. And so, you know, you're in this space already. Um, how hard is it to spend an hour a week, two hours a week, developing, developing some expertise in learning how to make money and build wealth through real estate in addition to transacting real estate as a salesperson? So we wrote the book. That's the focus. Wealth can't wait. Wealth is an acronym for abundance, full life, health, all the good things you can imagine. Why not get started on not just serving your clients but also building your own real estate portfolio, building your own wealth. When you talk to most humans in America, most family members, the uh, number one source of their wealth is their home. You know, I talked to a doctor the other day, and he's worth about $1.6 million. 800000 of his wealth was tied up in the equity of his home. And my question to him was a pretty simple one. Why do you only own one home and not two homes? And he said, you know, I don't know. That's a really good question. So, um, you know, res residential real estate is a great place. It's a great space. And I think every realtor out there should be building a real estate portfolio along with building their real estate practice. That's, that's great. Love it. Uh, and where, uh, where can the listeners um, uh, find the book, Wealth Can't Wait? So we were lucky enough to be a New York Times bestseller. And, of course, we're on Amazon. We were in the airports and we were in the Barnes & Noble. I don't know if we still are anymore. I know we are in some, but, you know, the sales uh, go through a pretty – it went pretty good for a while now. It's kind of moderated, so probably not in the big stores anymore. Uh, sure. Amazon's probably sure. the best place to buy it or barnesandnoble.com, or uh, they can go to wealthcatwait.com or just davidosborne.com and figure out how to get one through there as well. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, David, if, if people would like more information on uh, on you and or get in touch with you about the book or perhaps, um, you know, they want to find out more information about Keller Williams or maybe they're an agent um, in some of those regions. So repeat that. So uh, North Texas, uh, Memphis, and what was the other region that um, the Go Management team is in? Albuquerque. So North Texas, uh, which is Dallas, um, uh, Albuquerque, um, Santa Fe, uh, all of the state of New Mexico, and also Memphis, Tennessee is our stronghold. And you can reach me at davidosborne.com, www.davidosborne.com. Uh, we have also uh, a, a wealth template at, at thegoaltemplate.com. So if you go to thegoaltemplate.com, you can get a free download. One of the things that has really built my career, Michael, is to be very goal focused and to have a very strong vision every day for my life. So I, I obsessive goal setter. I set about 80 goals in the eight gardens of life, which uh, we track religiously and we just follow those and try to make things happen by setting and reviewing our goals. And that's the goal template.com. T E M P L A T E.com. Yeah, that's it. Really appreciate it. Go to davidosborne.com as well. And keep raising the bar. I love what you're doing. Uh, I was very impressed when I saw you four or five years ago. So you've been on our radar to get on the, on the podcast. So really appreciate your time. And, uh, again, for those of you that are listening, if you have, again, any questions on, on this podcast or anything in general about luxury, that sort of thing, shoot us an, e an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. I was just doing a training at the Austin Board of Realtors. Had a couple people come up to me and say, oh, we've been listening to your podcast. we got great nuggets. I had one gal say, I listen to it uh, when I go to bed. I said, well, I hope I either A, keep you up, but I hope I'm not putting you to bed. And she said, no, it's just that subliminal you know, affirmations before you go to bed. What's the last thing you're listening to? So again, I tell people all the time, garbage in, garbage stays. So continue to surround yourself with overachievers, people that are positive, because garbage in, unfortunately, garbage stays. So get some positive messages. Surround yourself with top uh, achievers. My name is Michael Lafito. Keep raising the bar and lifting people up. Don't divide. Don't label. And uh, let's just keep doing what we're doing and doing it enthusiastically and building people up. My name is Michael Lafito. Again, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. Our book's out there on Amazon as well. Check it out, luxurylistingspecialist.com. It's a simple read. It's 100 and about 80 pages long. And uh, thanks for listening. Until next time, prove them wrong. Michael Lofito, take care.